Even though I come to Universal Orlando every single week, believe it or not, there's still a few things I haven't done. We're fixing that today. Hello, ma'am fam. I am lucky enough to come to Universal Orlando for work and for play pretty much every week, which means I've done pretty much everything in the parks. I've ridden every single attraction from the smallest to the biggest heavy hitters. I've eaten all of the most popular and viral snacks. I've bought a lot of the most popular merchandise like Wands and Wizarding World. I've seen the majority of the entertainment, but even still, there are things on my Universal Orlando list that I somehow haven't done yet. I either overlook them, forget about them, default to my favorites. So today we're fixing that. I've made a list of some of the dining locations I've never been to, some entertainment I haven't seen, and some particularly cool souvenirs that I've never purchased and we are going to check them off the list because this is the universal day that I've never done before. Well, things are starting sad because I went back to the kid zone to meet SpongeBob, who I've never actually met. I've seen him many times, but I've never actually met SpongeBob. He's not here today. Some kind of emergency in the pineapple under the sea. You get it. But that's all right. We've got other things on the list. Next up, headed to get our first food item. I am headed into Richter Burger, which is a quick service burger spot that I've literally never eaten at somehow. Richter Burger is themed to the big earthquake in San Francisco in the early 1900s, and it was perfectly set in the San Francisco area of Universal Studios Florida when the attraction Earthquake existed here. That attraction doesn't exist any longer, however, the restaurant still does, and it's got fun props from the attraction, posters, other nods to San Francisco, including a two-scale replica of the famous um, statue that ended up upside down during the hurricane. <laughs> I just said hurricane, didn't I? I live in Florida. Earthquakes aren't a problem. Hurricanes are. Anyway, the statue I'm talking about right at the entrance, upside down, famous statue that went upside down after the actual hurricane at a college. You can actually learn more about that in my Secrets of Universal Studios Florida video, but for now, we're waiting for our food. Now, part of the reason I've never been to Richter Burger is that it, for a while, had very unusual hours and it wasn't open as long as the rest of the park was. Also, it went under refurbishment recently, where it's close to get some maintenance done. And the other reason is it's a burger restaurant, as the name may suggest. And I love Universal Burgers, but I tend to get them over in Jurassic Park because I like eating at the Burger Digs where you can overlook Velocicoaster. However, there are a few unique things on the menu here at Burger. They've got the Big One Burger, they've got a truffle mushroom burger, and they have a snack that looks so good. I've been meaning to try it, and today's the day. Taking a look at the Richter Burger menu, they've got a couple signature burgers. They've got a mushroom Swiss truffle burger, the big one, which is kind of like your classic burger. But what I do love about Universal Quick Service Burgers is you can judge them up with things like sauteed onions, mushrooms, jalapenos, and guacamole. They also have a couple of healthier choices. If you're looking for a grilled chicken sandwich, they've got a Beyond Burger as well as a salad. A couple of different sides, shakes, different desserts. Let's give it a whirl. We just had an earthquake. It started feeling rumbly in here and there was an alarm going off. I don't know how I feel about a restaurant simulating natural disasters, but my fries are here. I got a few more restaurants to check out, so I went for a side here. These are the Parmesan truffle fries. Oh my gosh, they smell so good. They've got a truffle aioli on them and a bunch of Parmesan. Looks like nice crispy fries. I'm very excited about this. Get a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I have been missing out. I was wrong to choose burger digs over this for these fries alone. They're really nice, crispy, perfectly salted french fries. And then this truffle aioli is bomb. I don't like mayonnaise, but I do like aioli. And don't comment that they're the same thing. I know that, but they're not. They're different. They're stuffed in aioli. It's fancy. Got that nice parsley on there, Parmesan cheese for a little nuttiness. These are a great A snack. I'm sorry, y'all. I've been sleeping on these. I should've been telling everyone to eat these. Well, I, while I still think if you only are coming for one time, obviously eating somewhere like Wizarding World or Harry Potter is more thematic, it's more exciting, the fish and chips cannot be touched, but these are really good. It was mobile order, it was fast, good service. If you're looking for a burger spot, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pass up Richter's. Hustling now to get to our next location the Born Stuntacular Stunt Show. Now, technically I have seen this show one other time, but it was right when the parks reopened after COVID, 
So it had different protocols in place than it will now. And I want to see how it's different. I've never seen the show in full force because of course when things reopened, people had to be distanced. And that included the performers. The Bourne Stuntacular happens several times a day and it's of course themed after the Jason Bourne films, the Matt Damon series, which I actually quite enjoy. It's a really cool action stunt show though because it combines real practical effects and stunts with real actors and the same technology but improved upon is Fast and the Furious and I'm telling you it makes it really hard to tell when there are real people and when there are screens. It's very impressive. Oh and real stunts from the film. That's exciting. Now I don't believe I'm going to be allowed to film inside the show but please enjoy this trailer I found on the Universal YouTube page. The Born Stuntacular check. You know, I liked it. I have, I have some thoughts about it, but overall I think it's really good and the technology is very impressive. If I'm being perfectly honest, I feel like it's a little long in places. Like there's moments where he's dangling from a helicopter and that scene goes on for like 30 seconds or a minute too long. I also kind of think they made the plot a little too convoluted. I don't know that people know the porn cinematic universe that well to know all the details um, and the pre-show explains everything but it's like eight or nine minutes long which is really long for a pre-show and then I feel like I feel like it's just a cool stunt show and you didn't need all the all the plot what I will say is the technology is awesome it's the same technology from Fast and the Furious from the party scene but like a thousand times improved to the point where there are times I really couldn't tell what was real and what wasn't for example, it opens on a street fight. It's really hard to tell who's actually there in person cheering on the fighters in the crowd versus who's digital person in the crowd. Like at one point, I'm pretty sure a digital person hands a crowd person a knife. I don't know how they did that. It's pretty cool. If you like stunt shows, if you're really passionate about the Jason Bourne films, if you are looking for a nice place in the air conditioning to sit down, I think the Born Stuntacular is a good kind of filler attraction. I do prefer the horror makeup show as far as sit downs go and they're pretty close to each other, but I liked it. Next up, I'm headed to a somewhat ridiculous souvenir that I often see and think, who's doing that? Well, today the answer is me. Welcome to Amazing Photos, where you can get photoshopped into a variety of poses from magazine covers to I Dream of Genie to Shrek, The Mummy, E.T., Jurassic Park, Scarface, and even The Fast and the Furious. Also, somehow Pirates of the Caribbean. Not sure how that works, but this is a souvenir you can buy, so we're going to do it. Taking a look at the pose book. Here's the one-person poses, so I got to look at these. I might do the E.T., I might do the Jurassic, or this Jurassic. I kind of like the clever girl moment. I know you probably think I went this one, but I would never condone catching a shark, especially not a great white there, endangered. Um, I, well, how is Captain Jack here? Oh, that's something. Dream of Genie, Cowgirl. These are the two-person poses, so I can't do these, which is a real bummer, because I love this Titanic one. Flintstones, Three Stooges, but I'm gonna go with Jurassic Park. So, thanks to Imar, the wonderful team member in there, I went in a slightly different direction than Jurassic Park. <laughs> she 
I told you, Shrek, that I've asked if I can be all the characters, so she helps me make this work of art. Okay, I'm... You want to first? Okay. Perfect. Okay, okay. Okay. Shrek's kind of grumpy, so... Wow, I can't wait. Oh my gosh, it's a masterpiece. I'll take it. <laughs> I mean, I am all five Shreks. I'm everyone but Donkey. It's so ridiculous. Now, they start at $30, and then each time you add a person, it goes up another $3, and then you can either choose this size or two smaller photos for that price, or you can do upcharges for like keychains and mugs. And it's ridiculous. Is this worth like $50? Maybe. But in all seriousness, you could do this with an app on your phone, but this is hilarious. There was a family in there in front of me doing it and they were all cracking themselves up. So yeah, I, I think you should, you know, there's, Wizarding World souvenirs, there's like very cool souvenirs, you know, t-shirts, hats, sweatshirts, etc. But you know what? I had never done it before and now I have and I'll never need to do it again because how can I ever top this? Made my way to Islands of Adventure, the second theme park here at Universal Orlando. Got a couple more eats, got a couple more adventures on my list. I don't know that we're gonna top the Shrek family photo but we're gonna try. Now, when I was working on this video, I realized there's actually a few more dining locations in this park than in Universal Studios Florida that I've never enjoyed. I think it's because a lot of them all serve kind of the same basic menu, burgers, chicken nuggets, pizza. So it's kind of like once you've done them, you've done them. However, there's a few unique items that I've always thought, oh, I should try those. And then I just don't. So today's the day. But before we get to snacks, we're gonna walk through If I Ran the Zoo, which is a kid's play area in Seuss Landing. So it makes sense that I would never have done this because I am not a child, nor do I have a child. It was also closed for a long time, opening after COVID, but I bet it's really cute. If you wanna catch beasts you don't see every day, you have to go places no others can get to. You have to get cold and you have to get wet too. Have to get wet? Too near? Too far. Let's go too far. Boop, ba -doop, boop, boop. Well, this is cute, except for the fact that I'm very big. Hmm. Ah, here's some animals. Oh, I think I could put my face in there and someone could take my picture. In the cave of Khartoum lives a beast called a Natch. There's been no other hunters able to catch. He's hidden for years in a cave with a pout and no one's been able to make him come out. Can you? Oh my gosh, this is small. You so small. Of okay, I'm coming in. Perfect. Okay. Oh. What? Perfect. Okay. Looking for me? Yeah, I am. Here you go. Over here. She did Hey, could you come out? Looking for me? Yes. Did you bring me any snacks? No. I'll get you some though. Jeez. Can I get me? I don't want to. It's a lot more work when you're a grown up. All right, this is super cute. I don't want to get wet though. I'm avoiding this. This looks like it'll get me wet. This is so cute though, for real. I think every theme park needs a playground. It's just like, that's all really little ones want to do sometimes, right? 
Now this long neck lady just loves peace and quiet. She can't stand her doorbell, so please kids don't try it. She's made it quite hard to ring it for fun, for this one won't ring unless that one's been rung. Oh, it's a riddle. So this one won't ring unless that one's been rung. <laughs> There's also a little like springy cow and some other little play areas. All right, this is really cute. All right, I really think that's adorable and I do think all theme parks need a playground like that for your littles. I'm kind of surprised it's still if I ran the zoo because I'm pretty sure that's one of the Seuss books that they stopped printing. So maybe it'll get rethemed at some point, but very cute. Doing one last thing in Seuss Landing, we are stopping at Snookers and Snookers Sweet Candy Cookers. Inside here, you'll find a glorious bakery case, and I comment on it all the time, this one specifically, because of how cute the Dr. Seuss themed treats are. Like, look at the Thing 1 and Thing 2 cupcakes or the Cat in the Hat cupcake. Also over here, these adorable candied apples, Thing 1, Thing 2, the Apple Apple, the Grinch Apple. I've pointed these out in a lot of videos and I've never had one. So today that changes. <laughs> How cute is this? It's a Granny Smith green apple with caramel and white chocolate and then sugar on the outside. And it's the Grinch, who is my favorite Dr. Seuss character. Again, I've always point out how cute those things are. And I feel like people don't expect Universal to have cute treats like this. And I've never gotten one. I've never gotten anything out of that bakery case. So yay. Sorry, Grinch, I'm gonna eat your face now. I feel like you'd understand. Delicious. I know you probably wouldn't wanna hear that, Grinch, because you're kind of a cranky guy, but you're tasty. I love candied apples. Now, my favorite, they actually did have it. It's just the Granny Smiths with the caramel and the peanuts because I like the crunch, but this is quite good. It's not super sweet because the grainy smooth apple is tart. A little bit of graininess because of all the sugar. Can't really taste the white chocolate. It mostly tastes like the caramel and the apple. I know you want butterbeer and you should get butterbeer and you should get Lauren Bordeaux's ice cream and you should get unique treats. But sometimes you can't beat a bakery case item and this is adorable and delicious and very shareable. Love that it comes with a bag and a zip tie so you can take it to go. Also, kids, listen up. That was an apple. That is healthy. Fruit is good for you. So if your parents will buy you a cookie, maybe they'll go for an apple. Health. Next up, headed into the All Hallows Eve Boutique. Now, this is not new. They've had this for a while, but what is new is they have released the first pieces of Halloween Horror Nights merchandise for this year. So I wanted to pop in and see what's going on and smell the candle, because they made a candle. Here we go. So the Halloween Horror Nights tagline is see you in the fog. So there's this t-shirt that glows in the dark. There's a hat, a magnet, a mug, but the real reason I'm here, there's a candle. And anyone that's been to Halloween Horror Nights knows that there's a very distinct smell from Halloween Horror Nights. And that smell is CO2 from the fog. If they have somehow figured out how to manufacture that smoke smell, I will buy five of these candles. It's just like, ready to scream, you know what I mean? No. Kind of smells like Old Spice. I'm not getting CO2. I'm not getting fake blood, fake flesh burning. I'm not getting any of that. In the candle's defense, it smells nice. It's not as in your face as Old Spice, but it's got a classic like kind of man cologne scent. 
but I just wanted it to smell like tear, you know? You know, regardless, I cannot wait for Halloween Horror Nights this year. It has really grown to become one of my favorite events of the year at any park. Universal just does such an amazing job with the houses, the attention to detail, it's incredible. So let me know if you're coming down below. We'll definitely have content about that. But now we are off for another eat. Grabbing dinner at Fire Eater's Grill. This is a quick service walk-up stand in the Lost Continent area right before you get to Hogsmeade. It has a little bit of a different menu. It's got a couple gyros, a chicken one and a, a lamb one. It's got chicken fingers, chicken stingers, which are chicken tenders with hot sauce. Uh, it's got salad, hummus, so a little bit more unique. And I always think about eating here and then I end up getting fish and chips. So today is the day. Also friendly reminder that Universal also has mobile order, so I'm skipping this entire line to pick up my food. Here is my dinner from Fire Eater's Grill. I went for the chicken gyro, gyro, gyro. I know I'm saying it wrong. Please let me know in the comments. I know someone will. And I'm not gonna lie to you, right off the bat, I am surprised that it's chicken tenders and not like shaved or roasted chicken, because that's what I would expect. But it's got pita, it's got, looks like lettuce, tomato, some tzatziki sauce. I asked for extra tzatziki sauce because I love tzatziki. Um, you can get just the gyro on its own, um, or you can upgrade to the combo, which gives you a side. I went for the hummus with veggies. They also have fries, or for a small upcharge, you can do chili cheese fries. And then you get to choose one of their bites as well. You can do pita chips with tzatziki, which doesn't sound like dessert to me. You can do Greek honey puffs, or the thing I got, edible chocolate chip cookie dough. Never seen that in Universal. I'm excited. Taking a look at this. All right, so we've got our pita, tzatziki, chicken, red onion, tomato, and lettuce. I like all these things, but I'm glad I asked for extra sauce. That is entirely not enough. Mm. Every new food I've tried today has been so good. This is delightful. Now, when I say this next thing, please know that I am saying it as the highest compliment. It reminds me of a snack wrap from McDonald's. Do y'all remember those? It was like a tortilla and you could get grilled for crispy chicken and it was like lettuce, ranch, cheese. And I know that very few of the ingredients are the same, but that's the vibe it's giving me. And I miss the snack wrap. It was one of my favorite things at McDonald's. Despite being thrown off by the fact that the chicken is crispy, I do think I would have preferred some grilled or some roasted chicken to be a little closer to authentic Mediterranean food. It's very, very good. I thought the pita might be too much, but it's not, even with the crispy chicken. I am glad I got extra tzatziki because it can use a little bit more sauce. I also think I might add a little bit of the hummus onto there as well. But the produce is fresh. The tzatziki is nice and creamy with that crisp cucumber flavor. Um, the chicken tenders are actually really good chicken tenders. They are nice and juicy. The breading is light. So I think if you were to get the chicken tenders or the chicken stingers, which again are chicken tenders coated in hot sauce, I don't think you'd be disappointed. It's also really big. It took me two hands to, to eat it, so it wouldn't fall apart. So I think it's easily shareable. If you're looking to do a nice snack with a few people, that would be really filly. You could definitely split this in half, especially if you get the meal where you get the hummus and the dessert. Speaking of the hummus, just give her a whirl. It's pretty standard hummus. It's, it's not flavored hummus. It's just traditional flavor. It's got a lot of paprika on top. It's a little runnier than some hummuses I've had, but it's fine. And it's nice to eat a vegetable. What I will tell you is that the hummus definitely tastes house made, as opposed to sometimes at theme parks, I've seen it at Disney, especially you get like the little Sabra hummus with the pretzels. This tastes homemade, so it's nice. And last, but certainly not least, the edible cookie dough, which isn't that just saying the same thing twice? Why do you need to clarify cookie dough is edible? Been eating cookie dough my whole life. It's all edible. For legal reasons, that was a joke, and I know that eating cookie dough with raw eggs in it could cause salmonella, but I made it, and I'm fine, and I've eaten a lot of raw cookie dough. So, anyway, I mean, that's delicious. It tastes like chocolate chip cookie dough. It, it tastes like really good chocolate chip cookie dough. Mm. It's like Toll House, again. There is butterbeer to be had. There is Florian Fortescue's. There are two some chocolate emporium giant over the top milkshakes. There's Voodoo Donut. There are much more unique desserts here at Universal Orlando that you should prioritize over eating edible. I don't know why I put in quotes like that. It is edible. I just think it's silly that you have to write edible because like 
even if it can make you sick, it's still edible, technically. You can still eat it. Don't eat raw cookie dough, kids. We're bear it. For legal reasons, I'm kidding again. Again, there is butterbeer to be had. There is Florian Fornescues. There are voodoo donuts. There is two some chocolate emporium milkshakes. There are all kinds of unique and special desserts that you can't get anywhere else that you can get here at Universal. Should you choose cookie dough that you can buy at the grocery store over those things? I would say no. However, I have very much enjoyed this whole meal. It was at $15.49 before any kind of discount, and that included the hummus and veggies, which again, could have been fries, the, the very large pita wrap, as well as the edible cookie dough. Very, very shareable. Another good thing about this restaurant is it's a good mix of like classic theme park food and not so classic theme park food because you do have the lamb and the chicken gyro. You've got the uh, spicy chicken tenders, you've got falafel, but then you also have hot dogs and regular chicken tenders and French fries. So if you had some kids or some picky eaters, but then you also had some people that wanted something a little bit more different and unique, you could do that well here. I would say the other downside of this restaurant is that all the seating is outdoors. So it's fine tonight on a nice spring evening, but in the summer, in the middle of the day, that might be not a winner. So yeah, I like this place. I will definitely eat here again. I'm eager to try those chicken stingers at some point. So we're having a great day. And we've got one more thing on the Molly's Never Done It list. To round out my day, I am headed to Poseidon's Fury, which is a walkthrough show experience located in the Lost Continent across from Mythos Restaurant. Now, technically, I have seen this before once, maybe twice, I literally can't remember, but both times were in the BC before COVID era, so they had different regulations with spacing and what the guide was able to do, and I don't think all the effects were working. Then it was closed for over a year and it came back up for just a little bit, a couple months, and it went back down for refurbishment and just reopened a few weeks ago. From my understanding, the refurbishment was just to kind of spruce it up and revamp some of the effects. And the storyline hasn't much changed, which I hope that's true because if I remember correctly, it was like delightfully cheesy and campy and I quite enjoyed it. thought it was pretty underrated. So let's go check it out and end our day going under the sea with Poseidon. Oh, 
Well, it's just as cheesy as I remember, and I loved it. Now, they did do a nice job on the refurbishment. All the effects looked fire, pun intended. Everything is crisp and clean. I also had an awesome team member. He was very, very funny. He had both physical and comedic timing down very well. And I think that can play a big part into how much you enjoy this experience. It's about 20 minutes, so it's not too long. It does start about every 30 minutes. So make sure that you ask the team member outside when the next one starts, because I ended up waiting like 15 minutes in the cold queue, which a lot of people were like annoyed by and were leaving. Um, so just want to make sure you have an idea of when the show actually starts. Should you prioritize this show over Velocicoaster or even Jurassic Park River Adventure, Hulk, Obviously, Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure TM, wonderful things on the Universal Studios Four side like Mummy and Escape from Bring Out. No, no, it's not something that you need to prioritize over a bunch of those other things. However, if you are looking for a nice kind of air conditioned break, if you're looking for something different, if you're looking for something that the whole family can go on, um, and or you have express pass and you're just looking for a filler attraction between some other stuff, it's delightfully cheesy, but there are some really fun effects. That water tunnel is absolutely amazing. I did a quick Google and I couldn't find it, but I'm gonna keep Googling to find out, uh, see if I can find out how many gallons of water are actually circling you when you do that, because that's really cool. I also love the part where the room seems really small and then the lights go out and all of a sudden it's huge. And I love the cheesy 80s looking comic book fight underwater. So. I enjoy it. I think I still would say horror makeup show is number one for me as far as the shows go here in Universal. Um, and I think it depends your personality if you should do Poseidon or Born as number two. If you want more cutting edge and realistic effects, yeah, go to Born. But if you're in for some like kind of cheesy, campy fun, I had a great time. Well, that's a wrap on my day here at Universal Orlando, doing things that I had never done before or had only done in the COVID times. I had a lot of fun. Now, I would say it's hard to pick a favorite of all the things I did today, but I think we all know that the Shrek photo masterpiece is the best thing that I did today. I gotta say, I really enjoyed both the shows. I enjoyed my treats. I think the Dr. Seuss play area is adorable for kids, but if I was the most surprised by one thing today, it would be Fire Eater's Grill. One thing I will likely do from Fire Eater's Grill, especially during the summer when it's hot and a bunch of heavy food doesn't sound appealing, I love the fact that you can get just like the hummus or just the tzatziki with pita or vegetables as a little snack. So I foresee myself doing that as a nice, uh, affordable, and lighter bite at some point. And you know what, while you're at it, add those truffle fries as a possible nice shareable snack because those are pretty tasty as well and I'll definitely be getting those again. What's your favorite underrated thing here at Universal Orlando? What's something that you've never done that you would like to try? Let us know down in the comments. Also let us know if you liked this video. This is a brand new concept for us so we can try this in other places. Not gonna lie to you, it's gonna be much harder in the Disney parks but there are a few things I haven't done and we can certainly get creative. So let us know if you wanna see that as well. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe, follow us on social media, come join our Discord to interact with the Man Fam directly. And until next time, friends, I'm on, and it's been so magical. Bye. I gotta frame this. You think Alan's gonna like it?